In before the whale and bad comments. Wine is without a doubt one of my favourite FOSS projects. Sure, we could make our own Linux software and yeah, a lot of that is being done. But the most Linux thing you could ever do is take a thing that is not at all supposed to run on Linux, like some random Windows software, and then make it work just as well, or in some edge cases, work better. Now, Wine is especially important to me when it comes to gaming. I use it, not every day, I don't game every day, but like, you know, three or four times a week. Now, under Xorg and X11, Wine has worked pretty much great for me, nothing to really complain about. The same can't be said on the Wayland side, however. Not that Wine can't be used on a Wayland desktop like GNOME, KDE, Sway, Hyperland, anything else out there. It's just that Wine literally cannot run under Wayland. If you're using Wine on Wayland, it's actually running through X Wayland, which is X11 on Wayland. And for the most part, this is totally fine. For most things, you won't really encounter an issue. There are some cases, though, where problems start to arise that don't exist on the X11 side. I've had some games simply not load when running through X Wayland. I've had some load, but have weird issues that cannot be explained and don't exist on straight Xorg. It's all around mostly usable, but a slightly wonkier experience. Now, while still being a while away from being production ready, this is beginning to change. This is a demo from a couple of months ago where the work is just now being upstreamed. This is Wine running it natively on Wayland, not running through X Wayland, running natively. Now, ignore the fact that it's Call of Duty 2, the dev just has like a boomer game mindset. Here's Factorio if you prefer something different. The point being, it's Wine natively on Wayland. So a few days ago, the first of many Wine Wayland driver merges has been opened. Wine Wayland DRV Part 1. Introduce the Wayland driver. This work is being done by, I'm gonna say it's pronounced Alexandros Francis, a developer over at a company we've seen plenty of times involved in the Linux space, Collabora. And on to the merge. This is the first of many parts in the upstreaming of the Wayland driver for Wine. Since the amount of code and commits is large, my approach is to upstream the driver in multiple parts in a serial fashion, with each part being a cohesive, to the degree possible, set of not too many commits. When each part is reviewed and merged, I'll move on to proposing the next part. My main goal with this approach is to make reviewing easier and more focused. If you have other ideas about how to improve the process for the reviewers, please let me know. A lot of pieces need to fall into place before the drive becomes even remotely functional. So some MRs, especially the initial ones, will be a bit more preparatory in nature to aid in the understanding of and justification for some of the code introduced in such MRs. All the remaining driver commits are always going to be available at this repo over here. If you want to go and examine the code for yourself, go ahead and do so. Now, before proceeding, two major questions need to be answered. Should the Wayland driver build be enabled by default at this point? And secondly, how should the Wayland driver build be integrated with CI, the continuous integration? The second one hasn't really been discussed, but the first one has been. I think that if Wine has been compiled with Wayland support, that it should be opt out at runtime. Of course, if the user is running pure X11, the application should fall back to that backend instead. At least to me, this makes the most sense, as people running Wayland most likely want to use the native backend if it is available. At least to me, opt-in is very annoying, as most other programs I use are more buggy with X Wayland than with their native Wayland backend. This also ensures that it gets more testing as early as possible. I think in the long run, where things are known to be stable, this probably makes the most sense. However, early on it's probably best to have it be opt-in. 
built in with opt-in sounds best for the initial version, then once it has a bit of testing in the real world, it can be made opt-out. Now, while the work here is incredibly impressive, and I hope going forward, this does actually get merged, as it currently stands, there are some things getting in the way of that merger. Most of this being pointed out by... Jasek? Jackek? I'm going to call you Kaban. So, a lot of the commits aren't structured in a way that really fits the Wine project. The usual practice in Wine is to enable all modules unless dependencies are missing or explicitly disabled. I think we can do the same for the Wayland driver. The usual practice in Wine is to have fewer source files rather than more. I'd suggest merging these files here. While patch splitting is generally very much appreciated, introducing temporary dead code in the process is discouraged in Wine. An alternative way to split is to introduce those helpers together with a code that uses it, but keep it as a very simple pthread wrapper, then in the next commit, you could implement additional robustness checks. This feels a bit premature to change defaults now. I think it's fine to do that relatively early, but doing that before driver initialization is in place means that we end up using it when no Wayland is available. Moving it to the end of this MR would be better. The last patch looks worrying in terms of forward compatibility. Looking at your Wayland branch, you use a few unstable files. What happens if and when they get promoted to stable, will those files be moved in Wayland protocols, causing your branch to fail to build? Also, it would be better to have commit adding build system support for protocol files together with at least a simple use of it in the same MR. None of these are major, you know, fundamental problems with the way these commits work. And generally, when you send things upstream, especially for a project like this that takes itself as seriously, there are going to be things that you do wrong that need to be addressed. All of these things seem easy enough to address, and hopefully they get addressed in a timely fashion. Now, this project didn't just spawn out of the ether, with the dev having no indication whether the Wine project would at all be interested in having a Wayland driver. This was actually announced all the way back in December of 2020 as an RFC, a request for comment announcing Wayland driver development. Hi all, for some time now I've been working on a Wayland driver for Wine, and it has now reached a good enough state to present it to the wider community. This driver allows users to run Windows GDI and OpenGL applications directly on Wayland compositors without an intermediate layer to translate from X11 to Wayland. This leads to a leaner and more efficient stack along with an accompanying blog post over on the Collabora website. At this stage, it was very far from being done. There was a lot of features missing. Minimize, better Z order and activation handling, keyboard layout support, grabs, GTK menu mouse handling bug, cannot click to select items, multiple displays, Vulcan. Note that there is another effort focusing solely on Vulcan. My hope is that we'll be able to share efforts going forward. This, like many things involving Vulcan, is using DXVK. And other things like clipboard support, drag and drop, games that change screen resolution slash color depth, cross-process window embedding slash system tray, X11 based XDG standards, e.g. startup notifications, but this was a request for comment. This was not trying to get it merged. It was just trying to, you know, put the feelers out there and find out if anybody's interested in this existing. And a lot of the initial response was actually relatively positive. There were some comments, though, that weren't exactly mm, super supportive. So the dev had the go-ahead and just chugged away with the rest of the project, eventually coming back in Q1 of 2021. RFC, Wayland Driver Development Update. A lot of the issues that existed before had basically just been dealt with by this point. Now, obviously a lot of things still need to be done, otherwise we would have been upstreaming it a year ago. But it was in a considerably better state than it was when it was first showed off. This also led to another blog post over on the Collabora website, considering that Alexandros is the one writing them, 
that shouldn't be too surprising. But some outlets outside of this also started discussing it. There was an article over on Pharonix. Experimental Wayland support for Wine now sees more functionality working. Now, between these two RFCs, there was a little bit of pushback. In previous discussions, there were some concerns about accepting the Wayland driver into staging unless there was some confidence that it would eventually be accepted upstream. What's the best way to get an answer to this question of eventual upstream acceptance? Even in this somewhat experimental state, the driver is viable for many use cases. What would be required to drive this effort forward on the path to staging and later upstream inclusion? And this was responded to by Zebediah Figura. Having a positive answer from Alexander is one thing and would be necessary for me to agree to maintain this driver, but I'd also like to see the following before accepting anything into wine staging. The driver should be at least as feature complete as the X11 driver. Ideally, it should be more feature complete that includes not just support at the protocol level, but actual implementer support across major window managers. A promise from the developers to respond promptly to all bug reports concerning window management, provided the guess that the same bug reports don't occur on the X11 driver. A promise from the developers to deal with any difficult rebase work. A promise from the developers to try to upstream the driver after it is introduced into wine staging. I will not be upstreaming the driver myself, and I do not intend to maintain it forever. Even with all that, I'm not thrilled about the driver. I recognize I may not have a choice in the matter, and I recognize I'm not an X11 developer, and thus lack significant context. But I don't like the way a feature incomplete protocol has been forcibly pushed on applications with the apparent intent of quickly replacing and removing its predecessor. I don't know where this idea that Wayland is trying to quickly replace X11, it's been around for like over a decade. Like it, it's taking its time to get better and better and better. And Alexandros did respond mostly in agreement, especially about who is going to maintaining and dealing with the bugs. Disagreeing though about the place of the Wayland driver. The Wayland driver is not, in my view, a competitor to the X11 driver, but an independent entity targeting an entirely different platform with its own capabilities and constraints. The existence of X Wayland muddies the water a bit, and one can certainly consider the Wayland driver as competitor to the X11 X Wayland path. This is a path which, as noted previously, provides fewer features than direct X11. Perhaps it would make sense to use X11 running with X Wayland as the bar to compare against in this case. It's kind of like comparing the drivers from NVIDIA and AMD. While they might be achieving the same end goal, they are drivers for two completely separate entities. You can't really directly compare them like that. And as for that approval from Alexander, it's mostly here. I'm not opposed in principle to having a Wayland driver upstream. In fact, I started writing one myself many years ago. It got stalled when I realized there was essentially no way to do decent window management and that the best we could do would be the equivalent of X11 desktop mode where we manage the windows ourselves. I don't have the impression that the situation has improved in the meantime. From my understanding, it hasn't unless we're talking about, you know, hacks for specific window managers or there is any interest in improving it. That seems to be the case from the uh, the core Wayland project. That doesn't mean it couldn't go upstream, but there will be constraints on what hacks and workarounds you'll be able to do. For instance, it will have to stick to protocols that are standardized across desktops without adding compositor specific workarounds, just like we don't allow window manager specific hacks on the X11 side, otherwise it quickly becomes unmaintainable. And with all that, Zebediah retracts her concerns and is willing to sign off on the project in wine staging. And eventually, it made its way up to the wine repo like we see today. Now, as it stands, this is still open. It may be merged, it may not be merged. At this stage, it's really unclear. I am certainly hoping for the best, whether that best is going ahead with this or sticking with the path it's currently doing.
whatever happens, hopefully Wine continues to get better and makes, you know, gaming and all of this other stuff much, much easier. But let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Do you ever use Wine? Do you use Wine through Proton? Do you even know what Wine is? Do you think we've been talking about drinks this entire time? I would love to know. So if you like this video, remember to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, certainly bear pay, linked down below. That's going to be it for me and I'm out.